Hello, welcome to Space Hotel. This week's episode is Murder Under the Mistletoe. Written by Eddie Francisco and Amanda King. Wait a minute. What happened to the music? Ahem. Greetings. I'm Detective Chet Van Gellis of Space Patrol, and I'm here to investigate a murder. A murder? Yes, around... Wait, why are you surprised? The word murder is literally in the title of the episode. I know, I just wanted to sound dramatic. Around 6 a.m. Earth time, the morning after Space Hotel's first Christmas party, the bodies of several employees were found scattered around the Christmas tree. A massacre? No, oh dear, no. They were just drunk. They had to be woken up. The one murder victim among them was Frisk Euro. Anyway, let's start this up again, but with me this time. Excuse me? There we go. And what did he say the name of the episode was? Murder Under the Mistletoe? Ugh, beyond cliché. You can Google that and find a dozen different murder mysteries with the same name. No, let's call it... Mistletoe Mishap. There. That sounds better. Now, where should I begin? Funny thing, I actually visit Space Hotel quite often, and I briefly participated in their first Christmas party. The party was open to guests and employees alike, until the night waned and I returned to my room to go to bed. I awoke some time in the middle of the night from none other than famed opera singer Sula Skylark. Help! Help! Somebody help! Sula's voice is very difficult to sleep through. After all, she did win five Haley's. I found that nothing in my room was working. The lights, the air conditioning, the heated bubble bath. The air also started to get thin, and it became more difficult to breathe. I entered the hallway to find numerous guests waking up and panicking, not knowing what to do. Everyone, please remain calm. I'm Detective Chet Van Gellis of Space Patrol. I'll get to the bottom of this. Officer! Officer! Detective. The power went out, nothing is working, and the air is running thin. We don't know why the employees haven't fixed anything. I already knew the hotel's sentient resource representative, Tops, and went to her office to see what was the matter. However, she was on the floor passed out, which is naturally strange for an android. Oh, well, aren't you going to do something about her? Don't touch her, she'll come around soon. Her system is probably rebooting as we speak. We shouldn't interrupt it. Let me go to the lower levels myself and try to restart the system. On the way to the basement lift, I passed by the lobby, which was virtually pitch black, so I had to turn on the light from my data pad to see. I saw the following space hotel employees passed out around the lobby. Cricket Crustalix, Astra Celestine, Chaz Worth, Frisk Euro, Mally Morrison, Security Officer Trisha, and Dr. Lovemore. Given the fact that many Starship systems today are mostly automatic, very few people actually worked the system down in the lower levels. The only person, or persons I should say, who were supposed to be monitoring the power levels were Eris and Concordia. I say persons because technically they have two heads sharing one body, but the legal consensus on whether to consider a two-headed entity a person or persons has been debated for centuries. I found them asleep in their chair as the monitoring station blared alarms. Excuse me, are either of you going to get that? Huh? What? Oh, my head. Good morning, ladies. I'm Detective Chet Van Gellis of Space Patrol. Uh, we seem to be having a dire emergency here. Are you able to reset the generator? The power went out and we'd really appreciate your prompt response. Damn it, Eris. I told you not to drink tonight. But the party... Shut up and use your hand to do something useful for once instead of taking a shot. Uh, 
Ah, there we go. What happened? You got us drunk again, didn't you? I told you. I was perfectly alright with you indulging in some pasta, but drinking was off limits. We agreed to be the ones stuck down here working. It was just a little shot. Or two. Or twenty. Excuse me, which one is Eris and which one is Concordia? Um, Eris, see? And I'm Concordia. It's protocol for me to interview people separately, but this is probably an exception. Uh, tell me, do you remember anything at all before the power went out? Well, with Eris as a sister, it's impossible to remember anything. Since I'm stuck to this pea brain, I have to suffer every drug and drink she intoxicates herself with. Nothing illegal, I should hope. Oh no. Nope. Nope, any nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Detective person. Uh, Sergeant? Detective. Just detective. Uh, so, how does this work out exactly between you two? It was quite difficult for a while. Eris always wanted to party, whereas I wanted to stay home and read and maybe do a little bit of gardening. You know, something productive. But we decided on splitting up our week. On um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And I'm Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. I hate Sundays. And the best parties are always Friday. But we had agreed to go easy this time around since we were the only ones monitoring the system. But of course, Eris went too far. Uh. Oh, excuse me, detective. So the entire night you two were stuck down here and eventually passed out having no idea of why the power went out? No. No? Oh dear, what happened? Well, that's what I want to figure out. Is there a log of some sort that tells you what happened? Yes, let me read it out. So, like... There seems to have been a power surge. Coming from where? Uh, everywhere. It's virtually impossible to pinpoint it. It's like the entire facility just surged with power all at once. Interesting. Well then, I'll go back upstairs and report this. Keep doing your thing. And ease up on the shots this time. Of course, detective. I'll make sure to keep my sister in line. <laughs> Pops had already been revived and gone down to the lobby. She and Sula were trying to wake people up, but nobody was budging awake. Gah! Of course this happened. What else could I have possibly expected from this party? Mally! Cricket! Wake up! Sula, sing off key. Oh, but the very idea is so dreadful. Don't worry, nobody's critiquing you. Right. Oh well. Cover your ears. What the fuck? <laughs> Richard! Oh, oh the sun! <laughs> From the bathroom, a very startled Job McConey stumbled out. Uh, the, the hell's going on? What happened? Everyone woke up, except Frisk Euro. The blue-skinned human still lay on his stomach on the floor by the couch. He wore a nice sports jacket and was well-dressed for the party. How much did he have to drink? Maybe enough to kill him. He's dead. I turned him over, and his blue skin had indeed turned a certain pallor that indicated death. Ow! Oh, no! oh. That's enough, Miss Skylark. Thank you for demonstrating your skills as a soprano. He's... he's... Oh, he's really dead! <laughs> no injuries, no stains. Nothing to indicate foul play on the surface. Dr. Lovemore, please perform an autopsy on this man. <sighs> Does this need to be done, like, right away? I would assume so. Because my head really hurts. Well, you're a doctor. I'm sure you know some tricks about hangovers. 
<sighs> so much enthusiasm. I love it. Everyone else, please remain in the lobby. I'll be asking some questions to you all individually. Do you suspect foul play, detective? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'm bored because my precinct doesn't give me enough cases since I'm too good at this and make the other officers look bad. Let's start with you, Miss Tops. Can you tell me where you were before the power went out? Everywhere. Literally everywhere. I never wanted this party in the first place. It was Mally's idea. And of course, it went out of control. First, I found out the cafeteria was serving a toxic mistletoe tea, so I had to politely explain to the chefs that their hard work for the past two hours had to go in the trash. The chefs here are very clicky. I've tried for years to be nice to them, but no matter what I do or say, they just see me as the android with the screw-upper butt. Tops. And then, every employee and guest got wasted from here to Orion, I had to clean up vomit on the fifth floor hallway because Mally kept wanting to hang up more lights They're so I couldn't though, find him to clean up the mess. Miss and of course, Mally had to take someone's baby without their permission for the baby in the manger contest. Miss Tops, if you'd please, simply tell me where you were moments before the power went out. <sighs> I was in my office. I was recharging. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor and was lying there for exactly 15 minutes and 34 seconds. I went downstairs to see what had happened, and there everybody was, lying around the tree, passed out, drunk. And Job was in the bathroom. And where is Frank in all of this? On his holiday vacation. I met up with Frank to tell him about the Christmas party idea. I laid out all the expenses that Mally had listed and expected Frank to reject the proposal. Instead, he said, That sounds wonderful! Excuse me? This Christmas thing. I have no idea what half the things Mally wrote down are, but it just sounds razzy. A giant tree in the lobby? Brilliant! And this thing here about a contest for the baby to put in the manger? Love it! This could really bring it around for us. But, Frank, this whole list costs over 5,000 quasis. The energy cost alone for the lights are 2,000. Ah, I have a generator out back that can deal with that. Frank, I'm not so sure this is a suitable economical idea. We're barely making even, and we're somehow trying to expand the hotel into a resort. Don't you think maybe it'd be better to turn this into a smaller party? Something for the employees in the break room, perhaps. Go supernova or bust. Right now, I can hear us losing all the potential quasis from not doing this. Think about it. We just pinch people's pockets here and there. One quasi for a drink, two quasis for a photo, and 1,000 quasis for a meal. Frank. And we'll be known as the hotel that does Christmas parties. What do you think of that? Notoriety. <sighs> all right, then. I guess I'll have to budget this. I'll have to figure out who in our group is also good at singing. Oh, don't worry about that. I've got a great idea. We'll hire Sula Skylark. You mean the two-time Halley winning interstellar opera singer? Yes. The one who charges over 10,000 quasis to sing at weddings. I can bargain down a little. Sue and I go way back, if you know what I mean. <laughs> No. And don't tell me. Wonderful. Thank you, Miss Tops. I'll go interview Sula Skylark now. Miss Skylark, first of all, I'd like to thank you for alerting us to the... Officer! Detective, actually. It was that insolent, no-good, crap artist, Bubble Bay. I'm sorry, who? <gasps> What's this? You don't know who Bubble Bay is? No. Fake the stars! Finally, if only she were here to see for herself that not everyone in the galaxy knows who she is. Miss Skylark, I'm going to need you to slow down a little here. Beatrix is her real name. Beatrix Bay. She's been jealous ever since I won Best Singer at the last Hallies. She was here last night to tell me off, jeering at me about how I came here to sing at this dump. Oh, don't tell Frank I said that. It would ruin his poor heart. 
I told him long ago he should go into show business instead of whatever it is he's doing here. So you're saying there was someone else here who currently isn't here, correct? This Beatrix Bay? Stage name Bubble Bay? Yes! And did you see her interact with the victim? Hmm. No. She left before the power went out. Uh, so what makes you think she has something to do with us? Look around. Everywhere she goes. Death, destruction, mayhem. The last time she was invited to the Halleys, the director passed out drunk at the after party and several awards were stolen. Nobody could prove it was she who did it. But I know. Ha <laughs> ha, I know. <sighs> okay then. Uh, thank you, Miss Skylark. Mally Morrison, you're the janitor here, correct? Head custodian. And also the party planner. Well, I don't think Tops wants me to do that anymore, but it was fun while it lasted. Tell me how this party came about. Well, a while ago, I remember that Job was from Earth. I've never been to Earth, so I always wondered what it was like. It's very hard to find records on Earth since people emigrated so long ago, and hardly anyone leaves that planet. Why did he leave? Well, you can ask him. He's no, right. No, no. I'm asking you first. I don't want to cross-contaminate opinions. Well, from what I remember, Job got accepted into some work program to be able to leave Earth and work in space. He didn't actually want to go because he has an ex-girlfriend there. I heard that! Uh, sorry! Uh, don't worry, Job. I won't say anything about how she dumped you. Mally! I think we are straying from the point here. Just tell me how this Christmas party started. Yeah, yeah. So I kept asking Job about what Christmas was like, and it sounded really nice. You give people presents and get a tree from your backyard and stick it inside the house. Then there's this thing I don't get about getting a, a manger, which is like a baby's crib, and putting it under the tree and putting your firstborn there. Something like that. Also, there's punch. But not the physical kind. Uh, I, I learned that the hard way. Oh, and a funny drink called Eggnog. And people sing! Oh yeah, the singing! Okay, so I told Tops about this and she didn't like it at first. How come? Well, from what I remember... Mally, this sounds absurd. I know! It's fun, isn't it? Where are we going to get a tree? We'd have to find a planet with trees. The closest planet must be at least ten light years away. Oh, it doesn't have to be a real one. We could use one of the fake ones we have out in the dome. You know, where the astroturf is. But that's supposed to be for when we turn into a resort. We should not touch that. Oh. Oh? Oh what? Well... You already chopped one down, didn't you? I can put it back up. Never mind. The damage has been done. So, can you tell Frank about it? Please, 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 please! We haven't had a party in a long time, and every party we do have is kind of... I can't believe I'm saying it... boring. I don't want to be mean, but putting Cricket in charge of parties doesn't seem like the best idea. I'll run it by him, but I'm just giving you a heads up that he will reject this on the fly. Your list costs over 5,000 quasis. I can use a few for my retirement plan. You don't have one. None of us do. Oh. Then what's being taken off my paycheck? Taxes. Wait, what? Taxes? In space? Look, just get back to work, and I'll ask him. And did you notice Job in the bathroom at all? Oh no, I was busy finding the best baby to put in the manger, and hanging all the lights everywhere. EVERYWHERE! Do you like them? I like the stars, but I find it weird that stars are shaped like that. So I made these new lights that are more scientifically accurate. But when did you pass out? Oh! <laughs> so, Frickit gave everyone brain melders, and then that's the last thing I remember. Brain melders? That's pretty strong stuff. That would explain the intense blackouts everyone has. You don't seem to be suffering from a hangover, though. I know! It's great! I'm gonna go back to work now. I would suggest you stay here for the time being. Did you see Beatrix Bubble Bay? Oh yeah! That was cool! She's a nice lady! I got her autograph. She signed my shirt, see? Oh, blast it! I vomited on it. Well, never wash his shirt then. This vomit will forever be for the night I met Bumblebee. That will make a lovely memento. Uh, one final question. What did you last remember seeing Frisk doing? Mm, I last remember seeing him sitting on the couch looking at his pad. 
Thank you. That'll be all for now. Just stay put here. Mally's apparent lack of a hangover gave me a thought to have Dr. Lovemore test everyone's blood alcohol content. I briefly stepped into the med bay to have her draw everyone's blood. I then moved on with my next interview. Greetings. You two must be the two front desk clerks, Joe McConey and Cricket Crustalix. Yeah, I fucking son of a bitch. I just can't deal with this. <laughs> Marvelous. I see you're both doing well. I won't be very long, just a few important questions. Firstly, I'd like to interview you separately. Let's conduct this interview in the bathroom. I promise to be quick. <laughs> Mr. McConey, you know the victim personally? You're a son of a bitch. I'm gonna, I can't deal with this anymore. This is ridiculous. I'm so over this. I know you're fighting through a hangover at the moment, but out with it. <clears throat> no, no, I try not to know anyone personally here. It's, uh, it's irritating. Did you see Frisk at all? Didn't pay attention to him, so no. Where were you when the lights went out? Um, here, actually, throwing up. Anyone else with you? Nope. Nobody? Nope. Nobody saw you enter the bathroom? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I was pretty drunk. Maybe. Uh huh. Uh huh. Anything else to add? Mm, nope. Nothing. I just, uh,. Just couldn't handle my liquor. Uh, very well then, you may leave, and tell Cricket to come in here, please. Cricket Crustalix, where were you when the- I killed him. I excuse me? Yep, I did it. Why did you do it? I never liked the guy. Simple enough, okay. Tell me more. How did you kill him? Uh, um, I, uh, you know, um, I just did. Cricket, you didn't kill him, did you? Why are you saying you did? So I don't have to go to work anymore? What? I'd rather be in jail than be here. <sighs> Cricket, I'm afraid unless there is overwhelming evidence to implicate you, you're going to be stuck in this job. <laughs> Blast. Well, it was worth a try. So what were you doing? I was at the front desk. During the party? Yeah. Did you join the party at all? No. It's a human festival. I wouldn't want to sully myself by celebrating some nonsense with the stupidest race in the galaxy. So how did you pass out? Oh, I still drank a lot. So you were celebrating? No. I wanted to pass out, so I couldn't hear the singing anymore. The same songs over and over how humans manage to colonize other planets while singing about such inane things is beyond me if i hear jingle bells one more time i'm going to implode and where did you last see job in the bathroom was he with anyone Oh, uh, he didn't tell you? Tell me what? <laughs> what didn't he tell me? Ah, the loser. Some girl rejected him. <laughs> really interesting. And who was this girl? Astra Celestine. And they were together the whole time? Yeah. Then, uh, Job needed to throw up, and she went to the bathroom to help him. Romantic. And then she left abruptly. I don't know why. That's the last I remember before passing out. All right, I think that's enough for now. You sure I can't, uh... 
Uh, sneak out the back or something. Stay in the lobby with everyone else, please. Eh, fine. Astra Celestine was one of the newer Space Hotel employees. I did not know much about her. She was a young woman with ambiguously brown skin tone and black hair with purple highlights. She sat alone in the lobby, tapping her foot impatiently and darting her eyes left and right. Astra Celestine, I presume? Huh? Well, you were with Joe McConey last night, weren't you? Joe McConey? Oh, M. I. Unfortunately. Unfortunately? Uh, he's a wee bit awkward. What happened last night? Well, he flirted, I flirted, he was drunk, I was drunk, we danced, whatever. I thought he was cute. Then he started ranting about his ex-girlfriend, Lorraine. That was okay at first, but then it started to get awkward the more he brought her up. He started sobbing and throwing up and I had to help him in the bathroom. Then he leaned in for a kiss and I left, disgusted. And where did you go after that? Around. Around? The lobby, the outside. Just wandering to figure out what else to do. There was a party right here. There seemed like a lot of things to do. Aye, but it wasn't really my scene. And what is your scene? Casino 77. The fancy dress code. The lights. The action. After I heard that Frank was having us host a Christmas party, I was hoping it would be a bit more entertaining. They blew all the money on the food. Don't get me wrong, food is great, but if you don't attract a great audience, then what's the point? Sula Skylark's singing doesn't interest you? Not really. She sometimes puts people to sleep. Besides, I'm more of a Bobo Bay fan. I probably shouldn't say that out loud. Funny you should say that, because she was here. Oh, my stars! She was here? According to Sula, yes. Blast it. She probably arrived when I was busy helping Job. Awful timing. So, did you know the victim, Frisk? I used to work downstairs with me and Chaz. Tell me more about that. I'm new here, so I shadow a lot of people. I'm a part-timer, actually. I was shadowing Frisk for a while when Chaz then decided to replace him with me. Why did Chaz replace Frisk? He said Frisk was better suited to air conditioning. Air conditioning... Is working on the air conditioning seen as some kind of demotion? Eh... I guess? I can't imagine anyone going out of their way to work in the air vents. It's crammed and uncomfortable and lonely, you know? What was Frisk like as a person, a co-worker, etc.? Mm, well, hey, it's funny that his name was Frisk because he was a bit frisky. I'm pretty sure he liked me, always chatting and showing me this and that and going on tangents about his life. Poor guy. Where did you last see Frisk? Uh, here in the lobby. Around the couch talking to Chaz. I think Frisk wanted to get on his good side again. I had a brain melded by then, so I don't remember much. <laughs> Besides Frisk, who else was here in the lobby before you passed out? Mm, Cricket. Chaz. Sula, Dr. Lovemore, Trisha, and I assume Job was still in the bathroom. And you didn't see anything strange before or after the power outage? Nope. That will be all for now. I would ask that you remain here in the lobby with the others. Mr. Worth, I'm detective- I just want to say I had nothing to do with this. This party got out of control. Everyone was drunk, wasted, sloshed. I didn't even remember what I had, and somehow I passed out. Did you know Frisk? Yeah, of course. He used to work with me downstairs. He used to work on the stabilizers, but, uh, he didn't do a good job. 
I had to talk to Frank about it, and Frank moved them to maintain the air conditioning instead. Frisk never liked that, so we didn't really talk much after that. Did you try to make amends with Frisk? Yeah, he wasn't receptive to our talk. So Astra here is a new hire? Yeah, she's a good gal. Uh, I mean, good in her work. Uh, I mean, you know, also good as a person. Yeah. Did you see the popular singer Beatrix Bubble Bay at all during the party? Oh yeah, she's crazy. She came in here unannounced and started heckling at Sula. The two went at it. Was Frisk involved in any way? No, he was just chilling on the couch watching. What's the last thing you remember? Uh, good question. <laughs> uh -huh. I think Sula was singing. I know Bubble eventually left. And then that's about it. Any other altercations? None that I know of. You don't think Frisk was actually murdered, do you? I know Sula keeps saying that, but- Well, I'll have to go see Dr. Lovemore's autopsy. That should have more answers. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Dr. Lovemore? Dr. Lovemore? <laughs> Dr. Lovemore! Ah, ah, dead! He's dead! He's dead! Yes, I can see that. We were hoping you could tell us how he came to be in this most unfortunate state. Ugh, what time is it? Dr. Lovemore, you didn't perform the autopsy yet, did you? No, I was about to, and then I was... I was reminded of Richard. Richard? My ex-husband. I stared at Frisk here and just thought about how... How our relationship is dead! <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> Deader than space! Okay, Colder than Just space! tell me what buttons to push here to perform the autopsy. <laughs> Never mind. I think I can manage. <laughs> Stick down over there, dear. Maybe take some time off. <laughs> Interesting. He has mistletoe in his system. Dr. Lovemore, where is the blood alcohol content on all the party goers? Oh, here they are. Everyone present at the party did exhibit excessive levels of alcohol in their bloodstreams, except for one individual, Chaz. Dr. Lovemore, I think I'll interview you later, actually. There, there. Stay strong. I asked Tops again about the toxic mistletoe tea served at the cafeteria. Oh, no. Nobody actually got to drink the tea. I managed to get there in time before anyone drank it. I think Chaz and Frisk were in the cafeteria when I went down there. Why? Did Dr. Lovemore find something? Hmm. Detective? Miss Tops, were you aware of Astra taking over Frisk's job? Wh what? what Hmm. Detective? Nothing. I'll be back. I didn't elaborate because I'm personally a fan of withholding information until it becomes necessary. I still had one more person to interview. Trisha? That's security officer Trisha to you. I see you're still enjoying the party. <laughs> the Christmas party? Shit was lame. Not like any of the real parties I've been to. I would ask the usual questions like where you were and what you were doing and such and such, but something tells me you were blackout drunk, possibly before anyone else. No. Maybe. It's unbecoming of a security officer, the only one at this hotel, to leave an employee lying dead on the floor for quite some time. Are you gonna report me? No, I'm not your boss, but the report of a death at the hotel would bring bad publicity. That hostage situation a few months ago already lowered public opinion on the hotel, and I have to say I've quite liked this hotel. Yeah? Well, what do you want? Are you here to interrogate me? I told Trisha everything I had uncovered thus far into the investigation, even the results of Dr. Lovemore's tests. When I asked her what she thought happened, she said, <laughs> hmm, I was hoping for something with more substance. 
That had some substance. <laughs> Are you going to take this seriously? Oh, come on. There was no murder. Just people being stupid. People have been stupid since the dawn of time. I had to break up a fight the other day over a Gargonian who stepped on a Squiglargian's tentacle. Add alcohol to the mix and someone's bound to die doing something stupid. And how are you so sure there wasn't a murder? Let me guess. You think someone purposefully shut off power to kill that guy. That... the dead guy. I forgot his name already. No, actually, there are elements that can be purely accidental. I know already what caused the power outage. It's really simple. What is it? The lights. All the lights that Mally put up. That's why Eris and Concordia couldn't pinpoint the sole source of the power surge. It came from everywhere. Oh yeah, that makes sense. The accident opened up the opportunity for a murder. But you said, Tops said, that the mistletoe shit wasn't served. And it's not like there were any obvious hint lying around whatever his name is. Like a broken teacup or anything. Exactly. The apparent lack of suspicious evidence is what makes it suspicious to me. But you know what there was a lot of going on last night? Drinking. I think it's time we visited the cafeteria. Come with me. You're not my boss. You might not have a boss if you don't show some effort in helping. Sh yeah, I guess you're right. The chefs had changed shifts since the night and were currently serving breakfast, running on Earth time due to the Christmas party. We spoke with one of the chefs, Bobby Drop. I am Space Patrol Detective Chet Vangelis. Where's the batch of mistletoe tea that was initially prepared? Already down the drain. We disposed it the moment Tops told us it was poisonous. It wasn't prepared at all in any other containers? Nah, we kept it in that percolator there. We already washed it and dried it since. Well, that throws a comment in your investigation. How much did you make? Three liters. Exactly three liters? I am not in the business of burning through my inventory. We do things exactly here at Space Hotel. If something calls for 372 grams, you bet your sweet ass I'm doing 372 grams and not a gram more. These teacups here, did you know that one of them is chipped? Oh. Hmm. That ain't good. Must be that lousy newbie, Trey. He never puts things away nicely. What are you thinking? I'm thinking answers lie in any security camera footage of the cafeteria and the lobby. Let's go to your office, Trisha, if you don't mind. Security officer Trisha, who never seemed to share a last name, had an office on the second floor overlooking the outside of the hotel. Her office wasn't much to look at. She had a desk, a computer, and a bookshelf with all sorts of miscellaneous items other than books. One shelf had packets of ramen, the other had packets of condoms, and a third had a pillow. I see you're the kind of person who pursues the basic necessities of life and nothing more. I don't use fancy words or phrases, but I know enough to catch an insult. This is the footage from last night, before the power outage. There's a whole lot of people, so anything could have happened. We started watching when the cooks began preparing the meals for the party. There was a lot to go through, so much that Trisha started to complain. This is boring. Patience. The answers require patience. Patience is for when I'm dead. What are we even looking for? I'll know it when I see it. Ah, here we go. Well, I'll be. Chaz Worth stood by the counter, talking to the cooks. Then he casually took a teacup and poured himself some mistletoe tea from the percolator. Hardly anyone else was paying attention. He then went to sit in the cafeteria and put the teacup down, reading something from his data pad. Frisk then appeared, coming upstairs from the lobby. He walked up to Chaz and looked visibly upset, crossing his arms. Chaz offered him to sit down. Once he did, 
Chaz offered him tea. Pops went over to Chaz and Frisk, her arms flailing, telling them not to drink the tea. She accidentally tipped over Chaz's teacup, which would explain how it got chipped. Tops went to Bobby Drop. Chaz and Frisk followed her, seemingly interested in what was going on. Eventually, the cooks disposed of the tea, and everyone else disbanded. Trisha then seemed hellbent that we had found our culprit. We got him! I don't need to see any more of this crap. Chaz, get ready for a beating. Wait. Trisha, something doesn't make sense. But Trisha had already stormed off to the lobby. If nobody drank the tea, how did it end up in Frisk's system? The camera was staring at the counter from the moment they set the percolator down to the moment it was disposed. I switched to the footage from the lobby. I fast-forwarded through the drunken debauchery and the drama between Sula and Beatrix. Mally may have committed a minor felony by putting someone else's baby in the manger against their will. Putting that matter aside, I watched Cricket approach the bar and pass around brain melders. Then, when nobody was looking, Frisk withdrew a flask from his jacket pocket and poured the contents of the flask into a glass. From there, he approached Chaz on the couch, but Chaz was already asleep. Frisk then sat down near him. Then, that was when the power went out. Chaz, there you are. You're under arrest. Huh? What? You know what you did, you lousy piece of slime. I didn't do anything. Why do you think it's me? Offering Frisk some miss... Miss fucking whatever drink. Come over here and face me. Trish, I didn't do anything. I swear. Trisha, is this true? Did Chaz have Frisk drink the mistletoe tea? Hands up before I cut him off. Trisha, please try not to hurt the innocent man. Innocent? You saw the security camera footage yourself. I can explain, but first let me find the key piece of evidence. I know it's here somewhere. I put on a pair of gloves and rummaged through Frisk's jacket, knowing I had done so before, but maybe I missed something. When I didn't find anything, I tried retracing how he must have fallen down. People noted him sitting on the couch a lot. I sat down at the approximate spot, thinking, feeling. Aha! Of course! The couch always eats things up. Here we go. I produced a steel flask from underneath the cushions. What was that? Frisk's flask. Hmm, that sounds catchy. Maybe the name of a bar? Frisk's flask. Try saying that five times fast. Detective Van Gellis, what is going on? A very complicated mishap. You see, before the party started, Chaz had met with Frisk to straighten things out between them. Chaz took a cup of tea and offered it to Frisk as a simple, nice gesture. But then, Tops arrived and warned everyone about the tea. Frisk and Chaz were then standing in front of the percolator, their backs turned to the security camera. So... So, I looked at the footage of the lobby later that night. Everyone is having fun. Frisk then arrives and pulls out a flask at the bar. Hmm, interesting. Then it hit me. Back in the cafeteria, with his back turned to the camera, he poured the tea into his flask, now knowing what a very toxic mistletoe tea could do to a person. Nobody noticed him do it. If you were to watch the security camera footage, he stands there awkwardly in front of the percolator. He must have carefully taken out his flask and poured the tea in without looking down. So, he hatches his plan. Get Chaz to drink the tea to make it look like the alcohol did him in. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, death. All of these things are similar to alcohol poisoning. Of course, what should happen at that moment was pure coincidence. The power went out. People gasp, people trip over each other, people say, excuse me, people grope in the dark and pick things up or drop things. Accidents happen. Frisk accidentally killed himself. Exactly. He took a swig meant for his own target. And if you have Dr. Lovemore look at this flask, I believe you'll find Frisk's fingerprints and also some tea left inside. 
But here's the obvious question. Why would Frisk want to kill Chaz in the first place? Is a demotion really worth the effort to kill someone? Well, from my interviews, there seemed to be an inconsistency. Tops would naturally know about Chaz's complaint with Frisk, but she doesn't. She's the head of SR. She should naturally know these things, right? Unless... This wasn't about Frisk's job performance at all. He never talked to Frank. Frank is on vacation, so he can't be here to verify if this talk happened or not. And then it hit me. We have nothing more than old-fashioned love triangle here. Er, maybe. Triangle? Converging lines? It doesn't matter. According to Astra, Frisk was a frisky person. So, say Chaz likes Astra and then saw Frisk as competition. Chaz then tries to reassign Frisk to another job in the facility away from her. But Frisk saw right through this. The two of them were arguing over her. Maybe Frisk even threatened to talk to Tops, which would get Chaz in trouble. So, Chaz decided to talk with Frisk one-on-one -on -one to straighten things out. Of course, instead, Frisk succumbed to a dark, impulsive decision that led to his demise. <sighs> Does that sound about right? <gasps> is this... is this true? Um... <laughs> sort of? It's alright. You gave it away hours ago. Crush the size of a supercluster. But... but wait, wait. Hold on. Chaz here somehow passed out, and he didn't even drink anything. How do you explain that, other than he's lying? This one requires much more lateral thinking. One of the last things that Chaz recalls before passing out is Sula singing. Sula? Is Sula still here? Yes, detective! <laughs> What song were you singing right before the power went out? Silent Night. Do me a favor. Sing it again, please. Right now? No, when the universe dies of entropy. Yes, right now, please. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Silent Night, Holy Night, Very good, Miss Skylark. Chaz has a simple case of selective narcolepsy. Who? Oh, what? Some people just find that certain sound waves make them pass out. It can range from something like a simple lullaby to maybe your mother telling you what to do with your life. Oh, Job and Cricket seem to have that then. Something about the way I talk? I guess I have a soothing voice too. We'll go with that, yes. Hey, so in a way, I actually saved the day! I knew all those lights would do something good! Well, Mally, go and unplug everything now before they do something bad this time. But I'll leave some on. Mally. The Christmas tree! Just the Christmas tree! Mally. Oh, I can't wait for New Year's! You won't believe what I have planned! Featuring the voice talents of Claire Bloom as Chet Vangelis, Tim Ward as Joe McConey, Mark Lee as Mally Morrison. Ty Shurman as Cricket Crustalix, Courtney Gagne as Tops, Deshaun Ricks as Frank Nix, Kate Dvorak as Officer Trisha, Ashley Torado as Astra Celestine, Rosalie Fry as Dr. Lovemore, Christina Hurhan as Sula Skylark, Stu Franks as Bobby Drop, Catherine Babashevich as Iris, Ruby Hankey as Concordia, Jose Samora as Chaz Worth, Theme song composed by Jessica DeMary. And I'm Dave Bratton. We hope you enjoyed your stay at Space Hotel. 
Check out Galactic Punch Bowl on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. Stay tuned for another episode in the Galactic Punch Bowl podcast sometime between now and the eventual heat death of the universe. Bye-bye.